you can see the soot covering the ground. This tree also heavily damaged by a fire that tore through this neighborhood and quite frankly scared many of the residences here of Lehigh Acres. In the surveillance video, it's a little bit grainy, hard to make out the perp. So those kids under 21 putting the bear back on the shelf. They're going right for the hand sanitizer, but doctors warn this can be deadly. Studies have shown that drivers who are texting while driving take their eyes off the road for about five seconds. That might not seem like a long time, but that's all it takes for someone to walk in front of your car or for someone in front of you to slam on their brakes. Tiffany? Well, tonight, crime tape still surrounds the apartment of Ibrahim Todeshev as the FBI continues to conduct interviews with those involved in the shooting. And tonight, the shooting victim's estranged wife is talking. Statistics show that 67 percent, more than 67 percent of the 55 deaths that were reported here along the Florida waters were unfortunately as a result of drowning. And with the Memorial Day weekend holiday in full swing, safety, especially on boats, is the number one priority for Florida Fish and Wildlife officials. The 63-year-old bridge on State Road 19 in Lake County connects to Varys and Astatula to Howie in the Hills. And as we drive across it, it seems in perfectly good condition. But it's still safe to drive on but its useful life is running out. County Commissioner Sean Parks also points out, according to this inspection by the State Department of Transportation, four years may be all it has left. There are cracks and crevices, rust and sagging, even clogged drainage, all things that will eventually cause big problems. Why, according to Parks, commissioners recently approved building a new one, a $47 million new one. Bridges are expensive and they have to eventually be replaced. There are people here in elected positions that think that as long as we can get it from the federal people or the state, we ought to get it to pay for something, even if we don't need it right now. Self-designated Lake County fiscal watchdog Fans Yoakum questions new standards that require bike lanes and sidewalks and, yes, more money. And it probably triples the width of the existing right-of-way that you got. The government and the taxpayer then have to pay. When you talk to county commissioners, they explain that this widening project is being done with a vision to the future when there will be a new turnpike interchange nearby, which is expected to attract new businesses, new homes, and yeah, you got it, more traffic. It's even possible down the road the bridge will be widened to four car lanes. In the meantime, the new bridge will be built just east of this one, and the old one will be demolished. There'll be a cost associated with uh, pulling it out, but the cost uh, to keep it, it's much more money. Construction of the bridge is scheduled to start in four years. You have that long to decide if it's worth it or wasted. Tracy Jason, Fox 35 News. Ready, ready, ready. Get You're watching Bronx. A trained seizure alert dog fast and furiously tracked down his owner, 14 year old Chris Carswell. Chris has epilepsy, and this German Shepherd is specially trained to alert others to an oncoming seizure and to track his master in the rare event they're separated. Hey, oh, that's a good boy, Bronx. Yeah, oh. He's trained to not bark either. And this is Cosmo the Poodle and seven year old Abby Zabbitt. Cosmo is also a trained seizure dog, and he's being specially trained to protect his master. He's going to be with me 24 7. And tell him. Till 19. So you're 18? 19. 19. Because that's how old he's going to last, mom, mom told me. Well, he may very well live a little longer, but nevertheless, the important thing here is that this seven-year-old now has Cosmo to make sure she lives long. And the dog came from 14-year-old Chris and the organization he created called One Boy for Change to help others like him. It was needles and poking and prodding and trying to find out what was wrong and nobody could tell me. And then that was how I made One Boy for Change, just to find the silver lining in everything. But you were only a young boy, eight nine. So you went to mom and you said, hey, I want to do this? Pretty much. You can find One Boy for Change online. It's grown into a nonprofit that provides service dogs for people who need them. Veterans with PTSD, diabetics, and those with epilepsy like Abby. The most important thing is if she has a seizure in the middle of the night, and it's a big one, and we don't hear her, um, we can't give her her emergency, her emergency meds. We don't know to give her her rescue medication, which, you know, is critical for her. Trained seizure dogs like Cosmo actually alert others when their masters are about to have a seizure. Cosmo runs into Abby's parents' bedroom and wakes them up minutes before Abby begins to seize. I think after the first time he alerted, it was the first time I 
had a, a really good night's sleep in a long, long time. And Abby is actually having fewer seizures, maybe because she's not so anxious. It helps me stop being scared about me from a bad dream. I like love him. I love him. Like he's like my he's like a brother I never had. I love you, boy. Drivers at times seem to put the pedal to the metal, whizzing along US 41 and Southwest Boulevard in East Naples at speeds sometimes exceeding the 55 mile per hour speed limit. We're sick and tired of it. I mean, it scares me. Even more scared after a woman from Whistler's Cove Apartments was hit and killed as she crossed the intersection just hours before our interviews. Also last month, a 16 year old boy was riding his bike, also hit by a car there and severely hurt. The area has no traffic signal or crosswalk, even though tons of people cross here every day to get to the convenience store across the street. As we were working here, a number of people came up to us expressing safety concerns. How are children supposed to be safe if there's no street lights? We asked for lights, we asked for lights, they, they haven't given it to us. Even the Collier County school bus driver stopped to complain. Traffic light. I took all of these concerns to Collier County Commissioner Donna Fiala. What do you think it will take to get a traffic light or something at that intersection to guarantee the safety of the pedestrians crossing it? That's a good question. What do I think it will take? Well, maybe a public outcry. Fiala says she's been trying to get a traffic signal here, but it's complicated because other agencies are involved. Parts of US-1 become dark and desolate. Any animal could sneak in front of your car, and by the time you notice, it's too late. Now officials are testing out a new flashing sign they say could make your drive a little bit safer. This portion of the Everglades is filled with Florida's rich wildlife, but through it runs a very busy road. Cars whizzing by reaching speeds of 60 miles per hour on this section of US 41 near Turner Road. It's a bad mix for drivers and the wildlife trying to cross it. That's where these signs could help. They're called Roadside Animal Detection Systems, or RADS for short, and it's the first of its kind in Florida. LED lights on these signs light up and flash when a large animal like a panther or a bear gets too close to the road. There are six of them along the 1.3 mile stretch. The signs work like this. Once an animal crosses this infrared sensor on this silver box, the LED lights flash to alert drivers. The RAD system, it's, it's going to work. David Sheely owns the Trail Lake Campground. Some of the sensors and signs are located in front of his business. He believes it will save the lives of endangered Florida panthers, but says it still has a bug that needs to be worked out. In a particular area where we see the cats crossing, it isn't covered by the RAD system. They kind of miss their mark. For its part, FDOT says it's still testing those signs. It will be evaluating them over time to see how well they work. The project was paid for with a $450,000 grant by the Department of Transportation. The American shopper is once again on a spending spree. You're packing shopping malls and searching for deals online. But before spending your hard earned cash, Many of you are first checking out the company. Sites like Yelp, TripAdvisor, and Urban Spoon, which allow you to write about the experiences, are increasingly becoming a deciding factor in where to do business. I read reviews, and other people read reviews. And many times they are not very flattering. Wanda Batista of Fort Myers started a recent online shopping spree by scanning comments before punching in her credit card number. I looked up their beauty products. I ended up buying some brushes. But then the problems started. The package came late. I was annoyed, I was really annoyed, so I, I had a, a mindful to give them my review. It used to be when you purchased something you didn't like, you would just walk into the store and say something to the manager. But that's not the case anymore. Many people are going home and getting on their computers and airing their grievances for the world to see and companies are no longer ignoring them. I got an email from the company saying if I could take my review off, I can get half, um, half of what I paid like as a refund, like as a bribe. So Wanda took the deal. A score for the company because that review could have had a devastating impact on the bottom line. Case in point, a study by Opinion Research reports 83% of online shoppers say reviews influence their purchases. It was a familiar problem for Nardo Foglio, who owns Talk of the Town cheesesteaks in Cape Coral, after what was posted on UrbanSpoon.com. I had people come in and 
tell me about bad comments. Like they seen bad comments and come in and walk and walk right back out. Foglia reaches out to those customers, offering them incentives to come back, but has never asked a customer to take down their opinion. Talk to them to see that I'm a genuine person to come back and I'll make it right. And look at the impact of these sites. A Harvard study found that each ratings star on the website Yelp translated to a five to nine percent effect on business. Once it's up there, it's kind of out there, and what do you do? The owner of Brooks Burgers in Naples says he takes the good with the bad and has this to say about unhappy customers. If you have a problem in a restaurant, we like to hear about it at the time that it happens. But for Wanda Batista, it continues to be the comments that will make or break her buying decision. I always try to try to um, pay more attention to the negative ones, see if there's anything there that applies to me. For better or for worse, the web is changing how business is being done.